I'm here at the beautiful Theatre Pass Mariah with Jacob Richmond and Elliot Loren, uh, the uh, writer, director, and star, respectively, of the smash hit original Canadian musical Ride the Cyclone. Um, hello, fellas. Hey, hello, hello Justin. <laughs> so, for those of us who uh, have been so unfortunate to us not have seen the show so far, uh, describe a little bit about it and uh, its origins. Uh, well, well, the storyline is basically about a, it starts off with a penitent fortune teller called the Amazing Karnak, who has been set on a certain setting so he can't actually, he, although he can tell the future, he's incapable of ever uh, expressing it. So basically he stages a um, concert from beyond the grave where six kids who died in a roller coaster accident, which he, he, he couldn't tell them that they were going to die in the roller coaster, have their last final concert the St. Cassian Chamber Choir, and they all perform kind of their kind of final number, so to speak, their final kind of eulogy in, in way of a song. And, and then there's, there's like six or seven just kind of like uh, playlets within the context of that, right? Each kid gets to tell their kind of story and sing their song. Mm -hmm. is, that, yeah, is that right? Yeah, yeah it's, right. It's, it's pretty yeah. accurate. How did, uh, how did the project get together? How did, uh, you know, where did the creative origins of it start? And uh, uh, well, initially, kind of, I was starting out trying to dramatize an accident, and so I, I was, uh, so I was kind of riffing on that, and it started off as a play called Tales of Insignificance, mm -hmm. which took place in a, again, once again, Uranium City, Saskatchewan, um, but it was about a flood, and then I realized I couldn't really put like 150 people on stage, which is kind of initially what I wanted, mm -hmm. and then I was riffing off flood, and then I got to typhoon, and I went to cyclone, and then somehow got to roller coaster. You know how that kind of works, yeah. and then, <laughs> but all oh, roller coaster is kind of because that and also would really help the kind of the the kind of exciting atmosphere of it because I think we all remember kind of as kids going to a fairground in a kind of beat up midway, mm -hmm. and and part of why the rides are so scary is imagining the carnies that actually built them. You know what I mean? Like these these rides that are hurling you through the air, and you see this guy with like kind of chain smoking. He looks totally hungover and depressed, and you know that he's the one who's building these rides. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so that adds extra scariness. Uh, so it, yeah. So it was kind of like also that was a very evocative time of my childhood. Was like you know growing like you know say in Saskatoon, kind of being, when they took you to the midway and you get all these inappropriate kind of presents. Like our prizes, you mm -hmm. know, like a Pamela Anderson ashtray or anything like that, right? <laughs> like whatever a seven year old boy wants. Uh, <laughs> who doesn't smoke or really look at, you know? So you're like, well, yeah, I guess I like Pamela Anderson when I was seven. Seven, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the, 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 those are kind of, and then I met with Brooke Maxwell, who's the uh, composer, co composer of the, the piece, and we kind of just started riffing because we'd done a lot of kind of musical uh, cabaret bits for uh, Atomic Vaudeville back mm -hmm. in Victoria. And so we, we, it was a really nice fit and we kind of just started working and kind of blindly going through what is uh, writing a musical, which has turned out to be really, really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. Elliot, uh, tell me a little bit about your character. Um, well, Ricky Potts, I would say, is... Um, Oh, I, well, first of all, he's, uh, I, I suppose, a, a, an easy place to start if we're going to categorize him would be he's socially awkward. He's, uh, I think the easiest way to identify him if you're going to put him in a category would be that he's, you know, a, a nerd. He's also a bit of an idiot savant. Um, I play the piano in the show, so he's a little bit of a piano prodigy, I suppose. Um, but I, I, I always, I, I like thinking of Ricky as being kind of uh, this... A mystery, you know, you don't really know a lot about Ricky Potts throughout the show. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, he kind of just jumps in every now and then and adds, you know, his his thoughts, his words of wisdom. Um, and uh, and then when his 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 big reveal is kind of this explosion of awesomeness. David Bowie is. Da yeah, David yeah, Bowie. Yeah. David Bowie. A little bit of Rocky Horror, a little bit of David Bowie. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he makes comments like, you know, one of the one of the kids, uh, Misha Baczynski, is lamenting the fact that his phone isn't working, mm -hmm. uh, his Wi-Fi isn't working in in the afterlife, uh, and he says, "Oh, I, you know, my, I wish I was dead," you know. And so Ricky pipes in and goes, "Well, y you are dead, right?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sim simple things like that. I think he, his his big thing is uh, just speaking the truth. He always mm -hmm. kind of speaks what's on his mind. Yeah. You were probably one of the more dichotomous, if not the most dichotomous characters in the, in the piece in comparison to uh, 
or you know, comparing your 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 actual character self to his kind of vision of himself and his own mm -hmm. imagination. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a bit about the the process of putting together or, or working with uh, with Jacob about putting to that to character together and kind of navigating that uh, that two sided dimension. Um, well, I think how we approached it was maybe um, considering the imagination of, of Ricky Potts and kind of what's going on in Ricky's head all the time because I mean uh, he doesn't have a huge amount of dialogue he's one of the only characters in the show that doesn't have this huge you know seven minute monologue he says very little uh, and so his way of expressing himself in the show is really just in his song uh, and so a lot of that was just kind of figuring out backstory and what he's thinking about uh, what's going on in his head Brooke was uh, really um, a big help to that as well. I think that if uh, if there's anybody that I think Brooke Maxwell, the writer of the show, kind of yeah. relates to in terms of a character, it Potts. would be Ricky Potts. Mm -hmm. Brooke actually wrote um, Bachelor Man, the, uh, Ricky Potts' song, uh, very early on in yeah. the process. That was the, that was the first one that kind of like just come out of the gate and oh. like it kind of was written over the course of an evening. Yeah, uh, I mean, like there've been like like it used to be like half an hour long. It was ridiculous. It was like the, <laughs> was like, like the B side of a progressive rock album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it was we, quite. Yeah, we went, it went on forever. There's a whole saga. Uh, <laughs> what else did we have? We, there was a yeah, war. There yeah. was like fighting against the cats. There was like all these other sections or anything. Yeah, like it was like really a, like a 12 minute, yeah, you know, 20 minute saga. Just you know, eventually it had to be like cut, down long long yeah, cut down. Wow. Yeah, but I, mean, I think the initial impetus of that one was the movie David Bowie was in uh, called Cat People. Oh yeah, where they turn into cats all the time, right? And so with that was kind of Brooke and I kind of just kind of mixing, fusing those things. And then of course, his kind of space fetish as well. Uh, but yeah, with Ricky, we always had that idea that he has so much going on in his mind that he comes off as absolutely stoic, right? You know, but it's just because he's just, his mind is always just going, 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 mm -hmm. going, going, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden when he does finally get to a chance to express himself, you're like, it's just, it explodes mm -hmm. on stage, right? I mm -hmm. like to think as well that um, it deals, I mean, Ricky more than any of the characters, well I guess, uh, um, yeah definitely more than any, uh, any of the other characters, deals with kind of uh, teen sexuality mm -hmm. and, uh, and f the frustrations of, of mm -hmm. being kind of outside of that, um, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, if, left, yeah, left out of the party. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, I, I, think, I think that it is actually a PSA for teen sexuality. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. this kid who flies in outer space and has sex May with has sex with cats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would say that that is a classic PSA. I think that they should make it into a movie. Yeah. Show it to An educational. Yeah. 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 Sure. I hear good uh, feline relations are on the uprise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. Of the yeah. 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 You know, your cats, yeah. just stay away from your cats. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Now, I know when I ran into you at uh, Jacob at uh, Summerworks last year, yeah. uh, where this, uh, this piece premiered in Toronto and, and certainly mm -hmm. got its kind of its big launch. Um, uh, you were saying that doing a piece of musical theater was kind of more different and I think daunting than yeah. anything else you tried. I mean, your past uh, mm -hmm. kind of big smash hit in Toronto was Legoland, which mm -hmm. was a, a two-hander, an epic two-hander, but nonetheless a two-hander. Yeah. Um, tell me about the you know the difference uh, in terms of putting that together versus or or any of the other smaller pieces versus well, Ride the Cyclone. Well, with Ride the Cyclone, I mean, the, the difficult thing is, I mean, yeah, I, I think that I rather foolishly went into writing a musical with uh, Brooke thinking that they would be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Like, because we go, oh, and then we write like a song and everything like that, and kind of, and that'll be fun. But then you, there's so many components to an actual, the, like, uh, to where the music goes, what is the music saying? Is it telling a story? Is it moving along? And then uh, kind of, and then once you've done all of those things, which are difficult within themselves, then you kind of go, does the song actually, and that's the first thing you wonder, does the song like suck or not, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, like, because the songs can't be also terrible or actually painful to listen to. Uh, so it's so, and then within the context of that, also kind of trying to tell a story within the piece. Uh, so it's, it's been, they're very tricky, and it's it's almost like that kind of like I mean, I look at my other plays, and I kind of go in this one, and I go, this is almost like another a completely different genre or different skill set. Uh, so we went in kind of totally innocently, thinking that oh, it's like writing a play. But it's completely, you know, it has its own set of rules, it has its own conventions, it has its own, like, it, it's, it's, it's an unruly beast, basically, within the context of, uh, and you're constantly, there's always just so much work to do on a musical. 
like it's never it, it never feels like it's ever finished <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and I mean even now it doesn't really feel like it's like there, it, it feels like we've really got like the spine of the piece but mm -hmm. I still kind of go is it finished yet I don't know right or anything like that yeah mm -hmm.